What's up, folks? It's your boy DT 2.0, and today we have something special, something original, I guess. Not that many people have this, at least I heard I have this, because I've been looking online, and a lot of people have done reviews on them, but not really. But I'm here to give you the fucking review. So, did I say fucking? Who gives a shit? Uh, today we have the LG 4A-C10 monitor. And that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as a monitor because that's what the hell I'm using it for, right? While some folks will classify this as a TV, I consider it a hybrid TV slash monitor because of the size and the NVIDIA G-Sync capability. We'll get into why later, but first, let's do a quick spec rundown. Now, to be honest, and I'm gonna do some B-roll on this, this mug is thin like Flynn. And if your name is Flynn, my bad, you know, or not my bad, just take your ass to the gym. Uh, it's 48 inches, but on the box, it really says 47.5 inches, 4K, 120 hertz OLED display. So all those folks whining about 4K can't push, you know, this and 4K can't push that. Well, here, as long as you have something to push this, it can go up to 4K and 120 hertz. And I'm going to put that shit to the test, you know. Not with the computer I have right now, but the one I have on order. So if you watch my video I just posted or my live stream I just posted with me in the ordering process to save you a couple of dollars, please do. Uh, four HDMI, 4K, 120 hertz inputs. Two USB ports, an Ethernet port, Wi-Fi, of course, NVIDIA G-Sync, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, Apple AirPlay, Apple HomeKit capability, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, all of that junk, apps galore, need I say more? And that kind of rhymed. You need to start rapping again. Uh, this thing is a pure beast as a monitor and a TV. Now it also comes in 55, 65, and 77 inches if you big, you know, big bank Hank. And I'm dating myself and that's why I got the, the old school uh, background retro. For those that don't know, if you had a VCR and it wasn't tracking right, you'll see those damn, uh, those lines at the top and bottom. Some of us remember that. Right, nostalgia. But anyway, uh, price was fourteen hundred and fifty dollars before taxes at Best Buy, um, and we're going to get into it now. For folks that haven't been to my channel before, I explain to you exactly what the hell you're going to get. You're going to get raw, uncut, unbiased consumer review of various products, and in this instance, it's the LG 48CX, or you know, that's that bullshit this 47.5 cx i don't have any sponsors except my damn wallet so nobody is paying me uh they wouldn't anyway because my footprint on youtube is probably about the size of an ant in space but anyway i'll give you my loves and in this case i usually give you my loves my likes my dislikes my concerns and my recommendations but since there's not a whole lot to talk about with this particular product uh, i'm just going to classify it as of loves and then dislikes and then my concerns and then whether i recommend it or not now on to my loves. Love number one, and it's the obvious shit, right? The size. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. 47.5 inches. Oh, we can round up to 48, right? It depends on how your old lady look at it. And I'm just joking. Uh, cute in the face and thin in the waist. This thing is extra, extra thin. It has a little junk in the trunk in the back and a little thickness at the bottom, shaped like an ant. You know, um, I thought about getting the Alienware 38 inch ultra wide monitor at first, but um, I wanted to try this first. And if I didn't like it, I was going to send it back and then get the 38 inch. But I really wanted this to be at the top of my list because y'all know how I feel about uh, OLED screens, especially if I like them on 15 inch laptops, you know, damn well, I like them on 48 inch monitors, monitors. I'm trying to get y'all to sell this to your you know your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend as a monitor that way they know it goes with your computer but there's other things outside of this that makes it more than that um uh, this thing is you know like i say if i didn't like it i was going to send it back but to be honest with you this thing is staying right the hell here it ain't going nowhere I got, i'm gonna have this thing handcuffed like a brand new girlfriend all right it takes some getting used to but once you do and change some settings you won't have a problem with the size and don't use that as an excuse to your girlfriend like i said earlier right size in this case matters folks anyway um this you know but really uh, i was taking a little a back of first and i'm using these big words or not 
uh, I was taken aback at first, but the more I played with the settings and the, the more it became comfortable. Now, the most important setting, in my opinion, is a setting to remove some of the blue screen to reduce your eye strain. I did have to do that because I'm sitting real close to this and I had to pull some of that blue out because I was wondering why my eyes was hurting a little bit. But that's just me, right? If you already have those blue blocker looking glasses and I'm dating myself with, along with the screen blue blockers, uh, those yellow frame glasses are the ones that you buy from Amazon, you're fine. But if you don't, then there's a setting in here uh, that will allow you to take that away and I can kind of try to pull that up right now. All settings, uh, let's see, additional settings, and then eye comfort mode. If I hit this eye comfort mode, you'll see the screen turn back bright, right? And put some of that blue in there, and then boom, I turn it dark. I'm just I'm gonna flip through it so you guys can see the difference, right? While I'm on here doing word processing, I always have it in this mode, but if I'm watching just like a movie or a TV or Netflix, I have it in this mode because I want it to pop. Anyway, that was my love number one. Love number two, 4K 120. It's the obvious, right? And I'm talking not one, not two, not three, but four. Yeah, I'm getting my LeBron on. Four HDMI, 4K, 120 hertz inputs. Now, there are barely any laptops out there that can even do 4K 120, and if they do, they're almost 4K, and I'm talking $4,000, and I'm looking at you, Razor. With that amount of money, you can literally buy a laptop with a 3070 chip in it, and this monitor, and maybe have some change left depending on what, com what company you go with. Right now, I'm just using my Alienware M15R3 until they release either the Ryzen M15R5 with the 3070, or if you saw my video or my live stream earlier, I went on ahead and purchased a desktop with the Ryzen chip in it with a 3070, a full desktop 3070 in it. I can't wait to get my hands on this, especially when I hook it up to this damn monitor. Monitor. Um, my R3, yes, can push 4K, but barely at 60. It's really 40, between 30 and 40 frames per second. So it struggles. But when I had the R4 in here, and if you look at any of my early reviews, when I had the R4 in here with the 3070 that I don't have anymore because I ordered the wrong damn uh, keyboard, that four zone keyboard was just trash. I mean, well, not even trash, it was ass. Uh, I had to send it back. I just couldn't deal with it. Um, but when I did hook it up to my TV or it was on, because I had the OLED, the 4K OLED, it was pushing it just fine, well over 60 frames per second. So I can't wait to get my hands on either the R4 or R5 and my, of course, my desktop, which I have to wait until late May to get. Um, I can't wait, right? And I thought about getting 3080 or the 3090, but man, those cost premiums right now is not friendly at all. But who knows, I may change my order and get a 3080 and take a full advantage to see what this monitor can do. Um, you know, my old lady might complain, but she don't watch my damn videos anyway, so she wouldn't even find out unless y'all hit her up. Anyway, as far as screen quality, LG and Samsung uh, are like Holyfield and Tyson. And again, with the screen, I'm dating myself, right? Uh, LG has the upper hand on TVs, in my opinion, where Samsung has the phone game on lock. And I get it. I don't. I, at first, I was confused of why Samsung don't make OLED TVs, but they're putting all their OLED screens and phones because that's their money maker. It makes more sense when you think about it that way, right? But this screen in particular is crisp, it's clear, it's vibrant, and anything you want to add that says this is the top of the damn food chain, the lion, the king of the jungle when it comes to monitors, right? TVs. It, it's punching in the ring, right? LG has this OLED TV game on lock. I've looked at Sony's and I've looked at, um, uh, uh, I, I won't even talk about the Vizio OLED, that junk is trash. Anyway, um, I can't think of one of those other companies to even put in the same ring as this because of the size of this thing. Because of the size, they made it at 48 inches. Yeah, it's, all, it's a TV on the box, but they know who they were aiming at. They know who they were flashing, flashing those lights at. Right, response time in game mode is top notch, and you think you were playing, you know, a PS5 or Xbox when you on your regular TV when you hook up your computer to this thing. Right, I had no no problem with my controller or my keyboard and mouse when I was playing any games with this. Um, so as a PC monitor, this thing is killing the game. I don't know where we go from here. I really don't. Now I wrote this review on it and. To be honest, it was a damn joy. Yeah, the letters were lit on the screen were literally the same size as the letters on my keyboard, but I liked it. And nah, hell, I loved it. 
Moving on. Love number three. Something that monitors don't have. Or they do have, but it's normally connected to the back of the monitor. And that's a remote. It's an acquired taste. This particular one is a acquired taste. But I love it because it's LG and it's different, right? LG stuck with this style of remote for the longest, right? And what I mean by that style of remote, like if I shake it, you'll see the little Wii mode and uh, yeah, Nintendo Wii mode functionality for this. You can see it on the screen, right? You don't have to use this. You can use a directional pad to do things on here. The little, the little circular button right here. It's a four, four way and then a scroll wheel in the middle works just fine. Actually, you know, uh, I have a LG B7 in my living room that has this same remote, same style, looks the same, exactly the same, except some buttons are different. And this one just feels a little bit tighter. I don't know whether it's because I had that one for years, B7. If you don't know how it goes, B, the last number at the end of that is the year it came out, right? Now, they had to change it to CX or C10 this year because we're in the 2020s. Um, anyway, um, you don't have to use the Wiimote functionality. You can still use a directional pad and it'll work just fine. But for the times that you're not buzzed and you can't move that pointer anywhere because you had one too many, uh, yeah, this, this thing right here comes in handy right d-pad works just great but again this is something that a monitor does not have and don't worry about this thing moving on the screen it goes away after you stop moving the remote for a while so uh, you know if, if it's getting on your nerves my bad love number four the speakers again something a monitor has and if they do have it it's trash and if it does not have it then you just don't have it. You got to hook up speakers to this. I don't need speakers for this thing at all. I don't have, I don't need speakers on this thing at all because the speakers pretty much kills my B7, which is a 55 inch LG OLED that I have in my, in my living room. East, this thing eats that thing for lunch as far as sound quality. It has, it's clear, it's crisp, and it has more, way more bottom end than that TV. Way more bottom end than I, 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 I thought it would, right? Um, so from what I read, especially looked at in some of the reviews the sound shoots down to the stand in the front or the front of the stand is in the front of the computer or computer front of the monitor monitor we're still using that term and it shoots towards you so you can kind of feel the bottom end um if you're not using headphones and you're not using laptop speakers this thing will do just fine and that's what i love about it when i had my dell monitor hooked up to this thing uh which i i, I returned to get this uh, I had to use my laptop speakers, which on the M15 for a laptop, it's great, right? For a laptop, but not for a monitor. Or in this case, mm -hmm. we can call it a TV. Um, you know, now uh, it does get loud, and sometimes I do have to hit the you know volume up and down with it. Um, but for the days that I'm in here, if it's just if it's getting too loud or I want it to be loud, uh, I just roll my chair back and I recline and I chill with my controller in my hand and I play my game. Um, now, I'm a controller guy, so I can roll my chair back a few paces while reclining and chilling. And for those that don't know, I do have the best chair in the business and I ain't advertising for them, right? Cause they don't know shit about me, but it is a secret lab and it works perfectly with this TV slash setup because sometimes you do get, sometimes when I'm playing a game, I am too close to it. Right, so I want to back off a little bit. So just think about that when you're getting this TV, the depth of your desk and whether you're going to, you know, hook it up on a wall or, you know, keep it on a desk and try to set as far back from it as possible because it is a little bit overwhelming at first. Right. Um, but there are some that there are some drawbacks to that that I'll talk about later, but it is what it is. Right. These speakers you will not be disappointed with. They are loud. They are clear. They have some bottom end. And you know what? I know y'all ain't going to hear it like I hear it, but I'm going to play this shit anyway. Way more bottom end than I, what I would, I, what I've expected out of a TV or monitor. Hey, correct me for doing that shit, cause I'm trying to sell this, shit, sell this shit to myself. Hopefully, I don't get a copyright here, but you know who cares? Uh, I ain't trying to sell, you know, I ain't trying to promote this as my own. Anyway, anyway, speakers, love number four. 
Love number five. And let me close this junk out. Apps. Yeah, I can use my computer to pull up a bunch of things, you know, uh, HBO Max and uh, Netflix and all that. But, you know, I, I got to do extra shit. What if I don't want to even fire up my computer? What if I have this in my office and I just want to relax and watch some shit? This is the monitor for it. When I hit my home button, Blue Goo, Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, Hulu, Sling. And then when I go here to the shop, you can download a whole bunch of other apps. Peacock. I don't know about this Facebook watch. I don't want Facebook interfering with my viewing experience. Paramount Plus, Vudu, Showtime, Stars, Redbox, Spotify, YouTube, YouTube Kids, Google Play, Plex, Twitch. Uh, you know, it's it's unlimited on what you can do with this TV. You know, and again, right, this is all of it, a TV and a monitor wrapped in one. So I'm good with the way LG framed this monitor. Monitor, right? There's a ton of entertainment options to keep you occupied outside of just gaming. The only thing I hate, and I mentioned it, I, mean, I said it earlier, but I didn't apply it to this TV, they don't have in their app store for some reason is HBO Max. But that's the one time I have to actually pull up my computer if I want to watch something on HBO Max, which has, you know, which been killing the game lately, right? With, you know, with, uh, with uh, Mortal Kombat, which some folks say was garbage, but it was okay to me. I'm not a real Mortal Kombat fan, the game in itself anyway, but it was okay to watch for me, All right? right. It was a, lo a lot better than the low budget one that they did back in the day, but some people may get in their feelings about that, but who the hell cares? Anyway, apps galore is my love number five. Lots of options here uh, to get you started. Um, and if you don't wanna, you know, um, be, like if this was just a monitor, Turn on your computer, do what you got to do, turn off your computer. But if this is in my office and I don't, I want to relax after doing work because I've been doing word processing all day or spreadsheets, balancing my bills, and I want to relax, I don't have to keep playing with my keyboard and mouse to pull up different sites to watch different things. No, I just hit the home button on the remote and do the damn thing. Watch what I want to watch. So that's what's great about this. That's what's great about this. So my love number five is definitely the apps capability. And last but not least, my love number six is connectivity. Now I won't get into specifics, uh, but let's just go over a couple of things that this monitor can do, right, in general. Now if I go to, if I click the home button and I click this home dashboard right here, look up, right? This is my home that dashboard powered by ThinQ. You have a bunch of options here, right? Um, here I can connect my phone, which I have before, right? Um, you have Apple AirPlay capability. So if I click that, it's going to wait for my iPhone to come up and try to share uh, some entertainment. Um, shout out to Pornhub. Uh, sound share. Um, here you can click this button, and what you can do is basically. Uh, play the sound from your phone or device to the TV. So basically the TV is asking you to use it as a speaker, which is crazy, right? Because normally TVs have garbage speakers, but I think LG knew that the speakers in this TV were so good. Hey, let's call, let's do sound share and let them use this TV as a speaker. You know, the next column is TV is TV inputs, right? Right now I haven't labeled them yet, but you know, right now, uh, HDMI one, two, three, and four, and like I said before, all one 4K 120, right? You do have an AV input. I wouldn't use that for junk. And then you can make a streaming server if you want. Stream live TV. And yeah, they have their own content. LG has their own content. Uh, next is sound out. So how do you want the sound to leave your TV? If I have a, a sound bar connected, I can use, I can choose my option here. As you can see right now, I have optical and internal TV speakers. I don't have anything optical connected to it right now. But if I uh, connect the sound bar to it, it'll play both but I should just turn it into an internal speaker. Next, says with the USB ports, I can connect a storage device which has movies on it or a media server. Um, I wouldn't do that shit anyway. We used to do that back in the day when it was exciting to do that, but now with the, you know, with the advent of Hulu, Netflix, and then having a server in your house, you don't need to have that right these days, right? And then last but not least, 
is the thing that I like the most is the Internet of Things devices. You know, so right now you can see it automatically when I click connect to home Internet of Things devices, it automatically noticed my uh, my Wemo devices in here. So I noticed my nightstand, my two lamps in my living room, and then my other lamp in my bedroom, or my, uh, yeah, my stand-up lamp in my bedroom. And if I click these things, I don't know if you heard those clicks, it turns them right on and turns them right off. I can also set it up to use the voice control button, but I haven't gotten to that yet. And you can also use this voice control button for Google Voice, right? So, or not Google Voice, but uh, for Google, right? So you can make, um, different requests about the weather and all that and matter of fact let me see if I can do it right now what's the weather like right now in Evans it's 85 degrees and partly cloudy today it'll be clear with clouds from time to time with a forecasted high of 86 and a low of 65 do that shit with a monitor next now on to my unfortunates right and I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, you know, but when you know when I like a product, I like to go as, you know, I like to talk shit. Anyway, dislike number one, and I know y'all gonna say some shit, is size. And I know what y'all thinking, right? Man, he tripping. He just said size was a love, and it was. But, like I said before, you better have the space for it. If you have a little rinky-dink ass desk trying to put this thing on, you will not like it. You know, it will get on, it will get on your nerves more than anything right because it will take up more much more space than it should because you have to think about it monitor arms here are not an option so it's setting it on your desk or mounting it on the wall and once you mount it on the wall you're really trapped you can't move you can't move your desk anywhere you know so it's once you set it up you have to forget it it is what it is you know um you can't rearrange the furniture so i wouldn't mount it to a wall personally unless i'm completely satisfied with where it is uh Right now, I have a 55-inch desk that I got from Amazon, and it fits perfectly on, but it pretty much anything else that I wanted to put on this desk, it kicked it off. And I don't mind, because I'm a minimalist when it comes to this. I want it to be nice and clean, but some of you guys may want to have your headphone holder on your desk, or if you want to still have your speakers or a sound bar, all of those things on your desk, you can't have that here, right? It damn near kicked my R5 off the desk. It's like hanging off the edge right now. Right, it's still sturdy. Don't get me wrong, but again, it's a little hanging, hanging a little off the ledge, right? Um, so keep that in mind. A desk of, in my opinion, a desk of 55 inch or wider will be needed for comfort. For comfort, I had an option of getting a 60 inch desk when I ordered this thing before I got this monitor, uh, but I chose the 55 inch to save some money because it was only five inches. Yeah, that's what she said, right? Moving on. Dislike number two, and it's the inputs. Yes, it has not one, not two, not three, not four HDMI 4K 120 inputs, but that's it, folks. Right? They have one AV input that I would not use. Uh, monitors usually have a lot more options like a Display Port, Mini Display Port, Thunderbolt, or even a USB hub. This has none of that. There are USB, but if you ask me, I'm using them for power only as I wouldn't hook up a hard drive to this, like I said earlier. Uh, so be mindful of your current setup and how comfortable you are with that setup before you get this monitor. When I had my Dell monitor, it had a USB hub, so I was able to hook up my keyboard and card reader to the monitor without routing cables all over the place back to my computer, or if I had a desktop down to the floor or to the, to the right of my monitor um, to hook it up, right? And I didn't have spaghetti all over the place, you know. now. You know, I have to take up two of the three USB ports on my laptop in order to accommodate this keyboard. And luckily, this keyboard has a um, USB A port on it, so I can use it for my mouse. That y'all know how I feel about this mouse and keyboard. They got to match, folks. They got to match. Um, but now my keyboard has a wire that wraps around. Where on a monitor, I was able to shoot it in between and then hide it you know under the pretty much under the monitor this one has to go back around down and then all the way to my laptop i don't know i like it and the only reason i do like it is because this desk is black and the cable is black so i can barely see it but if it was any other color i probably it'll probably get on my ner nerves and i'll probably end up getting a wireless keyboard so if you do have a wireless keyboard that'll work for you but me if you want you know fast response 
and you want a mechanical keyboard, you're probably going to have to have it wired up. Let's just be real. Um, so that's a dislike. Again, the inputs. It's not that many. And my final dislike, because I like everything else about this, or I'm just going to say it, because I, I didn't have likes. I had loves, because I love everything else about this, uh, about this monitor, is the adjustability. There is no adjustability. No swivel, no raising, no lowering, no tilting, nothing. Nothing at all. Once you set this thing up, it's going to be where it's at. You want to turn it, you got to turn the whole desk. This is where the idea of getting it wall mounted makes a little more sense if you had one of those wall mounts that pulls out and swivels all over the place. But I'll let you decide on that. Just know once you set this thing up, it's not going anywhere. Now the good thing about this, you don't really have to swivel it and move it up and down if you move everywhere because the viewing angles are on 1000 on this thing, right? It's OLED. So the viewing angles is inf infinite. Right. I can see what's on this TV if I'm standing almost 90 degrees to the side of it. Right. I don't have to worry about IPS glow or color shifting or none of that. So that's a plus. And that's why having it in one place like this facing in one direction with no adjustability is fine with me. And I can compromise with that. But you may not. So think about that. Now on to my concerns. And. I already know what everybody's gonna think about when it comes to OLED screens, and say it with me, folks, burn in. The biggest fear of any OLED TV, or phone owner for that instance, for that matter, is burn in. It was a major concern for me before I actually experienced burn in on my B7 in my living room. Sounds crazy, but I left to go home down in, in my hometown uh, for about a week, and for some reason, my Roku box turned on and had a screensaver up, right? A static screensaver up uh, that just kept playing over and over again. But when I got home, it was off and I didn't realize that it was on, right? Until I turned on my TV, went to Amazon where I had it all, you know, Amazon has that crazy blue black background, that weird blue background. And I looked to the left side and I could clearly see the burning from, or the, the image retention. We're not gonna call it burning. Let's call it image retention from um, my Roku box. And I'm telling you, my heart was hurt. I was ready to just sell this motherfucker or just throw it out the window because I was mad as hell, right? But I was happy at the same time because now I have a reason to get another TV. But me, being me, I wanted to try to fix it, right? I decided to use one option on this TV that LG has implemented. If I go to settings and then all settings, picture and then OLED screensaver. It's called Pixel Refresher. It corrects picture pixel and, uh, and prevents picture quality issues that may cause when the TV has been turned on for an extended period of time. So they're pretty much saying burn in the image retention without saying burn in the image retention. And I don't know why they're trying to avoid that term, but it seems like I can't find the term image retention or burn in nowhere on here. And that's fine, I don't, I don't care, but I know what they mean. Right. But anyway, I turned on that pixel refresher TV went off and I left it do its thing overnight. Now, here it says it takes about an hour uh, if I clicked it. But in the morning when I woke up and I went to turn on Amazon to see if that image retention was still there and it was gone. And again, I'm not sitting here to do a damn um, advertisement for LG or OLED TVs in general. Right. I'm just tell I'm just speaking from my experience. So if that's a concern for you. I understand it was a concern for me and then it actually happened and then I was able to fix it and now it's not an issue for me anymore. I don't worry about what's on my TV or logos at the bottom of the screen, right? Now, and speaking of that, so LG has some options for OLED screensaver, right? I think when they use the term screensaver, I don't think it's screensaver like on a laptop. It's actually screensaver like save the damn screen from messing up, right? Or from being damaged permanently. So you have pixel refresher screen shift and here it says screen shifts at regular time intervals and prevent picture quality issues that may there we go with that term again prevent picture quality issues that may cause when the tv has been turned on for an extended period of time right so you may not see it and i don't see it at all right but every so often the screen shifts 
to move those pixels around so you don't have that image retention or burning, whatever they want to call it, right? So that's another option. And then down here, the last one is logo luminance adjustments. It adjusts the luminance of static images such as logos and etc. and prevents picture quality issues, there we go with that term again, that may cause when the TV has been turned on for an extended period of time. So I, I don't know what it does, because I haven't tried it yet, because I don't necessarily watch regular TV on here where they have the logo at the bottom left or bottom right of the screen, but I think it recognizes that, and it probably adjusts the luminance of that to keep it from burning in, right? So just know that you have some safety features, some OLED screen saver safety features in the TV Right. Even if you get this as a TV or a monitor, if you get the 55 or 65 or 77 inches, there are preventive, pre preventive, 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 for preventative measures. There we go. Preventative measures in here to keep that from happening. Right. To keep that from happening. So just remember. So, again, that's my only big concern uh, other than what I have next. Concern number two is the warranty. And I said this before earlier right, or in my last clip, right, dead pixels, white spots, all those burning, all those things are concerns for every TV. So if you are that concerned with that, or with a monitor, or just get the extended warranty, right? It'll calm your, it'll ease your nerves. Now, normally, especially if you get a monitor through Alienware, I think they come with like a three-year warranty right off the bat. The Dell one I had came with a three-year warranty right off the bat. And Dell pretty much says, hey, we'll send you another one right off, you know, just as soon as you report to us and we validate that it's broken. And they'll send you one within like 24 hours I read, right? Um, but this is not a monitor in that sense because when it comes to warranty, it's a TV. I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there, LG. It's a TV. So... Read the fine print, folks. And what I mean by that is when you buy this thing with certain credit cards, certain credit cards provide an extra year of warranty on pretty much anything you buy. So if this thing has a one year warranty, when I bought it with my credit card, which just happens to be the AMX card, it added an extra year of warranty on the back end. And at one point it was an extra two years. So when they offered me, hey, you got an extended one for, for 400 bucks. Nah, fam, I'm gonna stick with my credit card because it's free 50. I'd rather that than give them give Best Buy four hundred dollars just in case shit happens. Like if shit don't happen to my computer, did I do I get my money back? Probably not. And that's that, I get that from Chris Rock. So I'm not trying to rip rip that motherfucker off, but he said that a long time ago in a comedy comedy sketch. Anyway, right. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when you purchase this thing and you have a you know you have a few credit cards, read the fine print on your credit cards before you buy this, and then you won't have to worry about the warranty. I have not had an issue with my B7 that I have in the living room, and I've been having that since 2018, and it's still as bright, still as crisp, and it still functions with regular software updates, like the day I bought it, and I don't expect it with this one, and this is the C-Class, like the Benz. Uh, this is the C-Class of LG monitors or TVs, however you want to look at it, right? So I guess what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is read the fine print of your agreements because you may not have to purchase the extra warranty if you're that worried, worried about it. So read it down fine print. And my last concern, and I'm about to poke LG in the eye real quick, is personal info. And what do I mean by that? Hey, LG is all about getting money. Just like all these other companies. They all want your money. They're, they're all about money, and they're all about either getting you to spend money on them or selling your info, drug dealing your, your personal info to other folks so they can get money without you even knowing. Now, I found that out the easy way because I had it on my uh, my B7 in my living room. But for those that do get this, make sure you go into settings, and I probably won't be able to find it now, right? Go into settings, go down here to general, additional settings, and tucked all the way down here at the bottom, out of the picture, advertisement. Check for advertisement settings and set it. When you click that, right it says right here limit ad tracking so they won't track you these things are defaulted to off and i had to turn it on so it says activating this option will stop the tracking tracking of ad related personal data from this smart tv so once you connect to wi-fi boom information is just flowing right turning on a toggle may impact the type of ads you see going forward but it will not stop you from receiving ads 
So keep that in mind. And I'm pretty sure this is not the only smart monitor that does this. And in this case, it's a TV. The other option now here, way at the bottom, and it says it clearly, do not sell my personal information. And this thing was defaulted to off. I had to go in here, find it, and turn it on. So if you sign up for an LG account and you put all your, your information in here, go in here and make sure you turn this thing on. So if you don't want your if you don't want different fucking texts and emails and shit showing up on, on uh, Facebook, how do they know I like this? And it shows up in my timeline. This is how they know, folks. This is how they know. They associate, they probably associated with your email address that you use, which you probably use the same email address all over the place, and they know who you are where you are and what you like and they're going to try to push those ads to you so they can get some money from you indirectly right but here it says activating this toggle will cause lg to instruct now it doesn't say it tells them not to it instructs its third-party providers to cease commercializing your personal information right so it'll instruct, hey don't do that so if you tell a child don't do something what they gonna do they don't fucking do it so at least they you telling them to tell those other folks don't sell my information now Again, if you don't want it, you know, you don't want this to be a, a concern for you at all, don't sign into nothing. That's your choice, right? I get it. You know, if you don't if you're that sensitive about your personal information, but I don't have that much stuff out there of me personally. At least I don't think. I'm probably outside my door right now. Anyway, uh, I don't think I had that much personal stuff out there to be worried about, but at the same time, you don't know what you don't know. So I turned it on to tell them to instruct its third party providers. Uh, to cease commercializing my personal information. So that was my final concern. And uh, and that's a dislike also. Let's just be real. That's a fucking dislike because they tuck it all the way down at the bottom of the damn menu. That's that's messed up, man. That's messed up. Now on to my recommendation. So do I recommend the LG 4HC10 monitor? Hell yeah. I recommend this product. 4K120 what speakers hell yeah oled huh this monitor tv is a luxury item keep that in mind and if you can get one when it goes on sale which it normally does it'll be a great addition to your gaming rig or even your entertainment room right because our entertainment room these days are not only just gaming stuff it's also stuff to watch tv stuff to watch throwback shows on stuff to watch to stream your show it's stuff to do a whole lot of stuff that you can do on a not just a monitor but on a tv you know I think if your desk is not good enough for this bougie ass monitor, don't get it. Think about getting your desk first and then getting this, you know. Um, now, this TV is too good for, in my opinion, it's too good for my uh, desk, but I'm going to make it work anyway because I'm not throwing this in the trash to get me a new damn desk. I would like a bigger one, but I'm not, not, not right now. But don't quote me on that. You may see me do a video in a week with a new damn desk and then be calling me out on it. But who gives a shit? Um, if, you're, if you're okay with limiting yourself to only 120 hertz, whether you go up to 4K or not, this monitor slash TV hybrid will be just fine for you. But just remember, when you're gaming on this, max is 120. It doesn't matter what you drop it down to. 1080p, you know, 1440, it's going to go up to 120 and that's it no 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 more than that so keep that in mind uh moving forward you know because and you also have to think about the things that this thing that a regular that this thing has that a regular monitor doesn't and then also vice versa you know usb hub more types of inputs swivel raising lowering uh monitor arm compatibility and all of those things should factor in your decision in order uh when you're trying to order or thinking about ordering one of these right but once you compromise on those things, which were minor to me, you won't be disappointed. And I guarantee that. All you have to do is just pull up a game. Now, speaking of that, on the back end of this video, I'm going to just play some games so you can see how they look slash play. Now, disclaimer, before anybody starts whining in the comments and not, read, not looking at the whole video, which nobody does these days, uh, to achieve over 60 hertz, with my 2070 Super that I have in my in my having my M15 R3, I'm going to drop it down to 1440. And I get it. Why would you buy? I can hear y'all right now, and I'm saying it before y'all say it. Why the hell would you buy a 4K 120, you know, monitor if you can't push 4K 120? It's on order, folks. It's on order. It's coming. 
and then I'm gonna push y'all. So if you do say something, I'm gonna mash you in the face anyway, cause that's what I do. But hey, we all family here. I don't care. Um, but I am gonna drop it down to 140, and then once I get my desktop, and then maybe the R5 in, then I'll re-upload some footage and then show you the different difference. Other than that, before I go into gaming, thanks for watching, folks. This is DT 2.0. Peace. And the Spurs start out with the ball. And the starting group for the Spurs. DeRozan out there with Johnson. Then there's DeJounte Murray. Then it's White. And it's Pirtle in at the five down low. And the dunk by Pirtle. Really? That's good awareness from DeRozan. Spots the open man. That speaks to his all-around game. Ooh, put him on skates. Bucket. And that one off the back of the rim and in. And this team looking to get him the ball and get him in rhythm quickly because he's someone that you lean Y'all know I like old school players, so I'm going to play with these teams every time. Allen Iverson with the foul. And that's his first foul. That's something you hate. You're trying to but as you can see, I'm maintaining well above 100 frames per second. Take you right, out of it. right? And this is at 1440. Even though this game technically tells you and recommends to set it at 60. Using his height and length there to prevent the second chance opportunity. Go. Bucket. R.I.P. Kobe. And that's a nice pass. The patience of LeBron. Bucket. Let the play develop. I have no problem with this. No glitches, no screen tearing, nothing. Nothing at all. Somebody need to get him off the court because he just, oh, oh. And here's Duncan. He'll bring it up for the 2000s team. And Kobe, here we go. Bucket. Three from LeBron. That's in coming off an assist from Bryant. When LeBron hits the range, it can help stretch the D and open up more driving lanes. Marie finds DeRozan. Just around a minute and a half into the first quarter. Get shit out of here. I'm getting too excited. NBA 2K1. Done deal. All right. Got to drop down to 1440, and I'm well over 80 frames per second. Easy. Any idea why we're sealing everything up? Because when I say buttery smooth, buttery smooth. No one goes in or out. I know that, smart ass. Buttery but smooth. You know why? That's above my day grade. When the recon team gets here, maybe they'll be able to tell us something. Now, for shits and giggles, let's do this. Because, again, I said my 2070 Super uh, really couldn't push 4K on, even on this on its own monitor because it's a 4K OLED. But I'm going to push it anyway. Apply changes. Go down here, monitor refresh rate, and make it punch above 60. Yes. Now we're at 4K, and then we're operating... Still smooth, but not as smooth at 40, 40, 50 frames per second, right? So still, depending on where you are, right? To me, if you ask me this close to the TV, it doesn't look that much different, but you can tell the smoothness from this to where when I drop it to... Oh, no, we don't want to do that. 1440 at 120. Access points are covered, and most of the barricades are finished. Almost isn't good enough. Secure the perimeter now, and make damn sure it's locked tight. No one knows what happened. This fucking place. I'm telling you, the colors on here are vibrant. Let's just look at this, folks. Look at that. Look at that. Crazy. Crazy. Now, I know what some of y'all are going to ask, you know, and I'm doing this, this clip a little bit extra long because there's a lot going on in this, in this particular game in general. Hey, what if I drop it down to 1080, right? Because you want to maximize the frames, right? Um, well, how does it look? Does it look blurry? Well, let's see. Because I don't, for this particular TV, I don't know. On my main B7, no.
and if you ask me, it looks like a 1080p screen stretched out to 48 inches, which we know is probably not desirable in any in any instance, right? It's extra, extra buttery smooth now, but it's still 1080. It just looks like 1080. Now, are the words blurry? No, they just look like 1080p, right? Stretched out to 48 inches. Or if you have a bigger TV, it's stretched out because the, remember, this game is not, it's a computer game, right? It's a PC game. It's not like it's on Xbox or the, the, the uh, you know, or the PlayStation where it's coded to be as crisp as possible. You know, it, it it's doing what it could do, right? So just to show you guys, boom, boom, and then I up it back to 1440. You can instantly tell that the colors get brighter and it's a little bit more sharper, a little bit bigger, and I'm still getting 80 frames per second here, right? So just know you're getting a good, good piece of equipment right here. And I'm just about to cause some hate and discontent. Because I can. Oh, bro. What are you doing? Jonah, Commander Walk is. Tomb Raider. This is Grand Theft Auto at 4K. And as you can see, I'm punching above. Surprisingly, and I didn't think it could, I'm punching above. 60 frames per second and when, folks when i tell you this mug is buttery buttery smooth and crisp it looked like i'm really looking through a window outside of these cats like for real for real this is ridiculous what's cracking man no i don't want that car i want to get in this one getting a fake ass charger jeez louise and I'm, I, look, look, it's just, so I guess this uh, 2070 heard me talking about it. So I, I wouldn't exactly drop this down to 1470, but I'm just driving around. That's all. Doing stuff that I normally wouldn't do in real traffic. Oh, my bad people. And you know, one thing I like about Grand Theft Auto are the soundtracks, and this is just as... No problem. Looking around the city, no problem. It is what it is. It is what it is. Through the station wagon. Blow again. How dare you? What you say? That's what I thought. Oh, this little mug roll, this little mini Cooper. Anyway, that was Grand Theft Auto. My bad, folks. It cut out for a second. But that was Grand Theft Auto. As you can see, punching well above 60. And it's actually... If I go to display or graphics, it's actually at 4K right now. So all is not lost. All right? Do I have all everything on? No, I don't. 
but do I have to? It's still crisp and buttery smooth, you know? Man, that looks so crisp and clear. It's ridiculous. Look at, just look at the shadow and the, uh, the reflection in the back of his... Look at the reflection in the back of... Right. Oh, man. I can't wait to get that 30, 70, 30, 80 in here. Anyway, that's all the games. I'm not going to go through too many. Three is enough. Thank y'all for watching. Peace.